Today, we're gonna to be covering what to do if you feel your lower back kicking in too much on squats, how to stay more upright in a squat, squatting for taller lifters, how to get more depth in a squat, and how to increase ankle mobility. So if you're struggling with any of these things right now, this video is for you. And if not, then I hope you stick around anyway for the YouTube algorithm. Also, I'm sure you know somebody who does struggle with any of these things. And after watching this video, you'll be able to pass on some of these ideas to them to make you look smarter. And we all like looking smart. So as always, you'll find timestamps and a sectioned out progress bar below, so you can jump back and forth to whatever you find most interesting. Today's question comes from Ma Fuka, which I've definitely pronounced correctly, who asks, recommendations for correcting a squat that has a forwards lean and a good stretch for hips, probably because they think that having more mobile hips will be part of correcting this forwards lean. The short and simple answer is to elevate your heels. This can be done using a squat wedge of some sort, or Olympic lifting shoes, or simply a couple of plates, depending on the height that you need. So if you've done this before, you've probably noticed immediately how much it improves your ability to stay more upright in a squat and achieve better depth. But you probably asked one of the most common questions that I get in response to this, which is, isn't this just a band-aid for having poor mobility, and is it really a viable long-term solution? And that's where we're going to get to the slightly longer but more interesting answer to the question of staying more upright in the squat. Because no, it's not a band-aid. And yes, heel elevation is a viable long-term solution that can actually give you a lot of benefits. And here's why. When you perform a squat with a weight, the most efficient path for the bar to follow is to go straight down and to remain over your midfoot. So instead of thinking of this as us squatting with a weight, think about it as having the bar traveling straight down and you need to fold your body up as effectively as possible to get out of the way. With this in mind, there's a couple of different scenarios that'll play out depending on not just your mobility through your hip and ankle joints, but your bone structure as well. We all have different torso lengths and leg lengths. And within that leg length, we also have different lengths to our tibia or lower leg and femur or upper thigh bone. And this can even be seen in people who are the same height. For example, my training partner Sherelle and I are the exact same height, but we have very different torso and femur lengths. Her femurs are much longer than mine, whilst her torso is much shorter. Our tibias, or lower leg from the knee down, seem to be roughly the same length. So what does this mean for our squats, with all else being equal? In order for a person with a longer femur like Sherelle to be able to fold up underneath the barbell whilst maintaining that bar positioned over the midfoot, that person will have to bend forwards more than the shorter femur person. If the longer femur person on the right was more upright, the bar weight starts to get distributed too far back behind their midfoot. And with any sort of weight on their back, this becomes an impossible position to hold because you'll topple over backwards. So we have to understand that it's not a bad thing to be bending forwards at all. It's simply how your brain has determined the best and most efficient way for you to position your body to move that weight. But what does this mean for muscle involvement in the squat? The person with the longer femurs will always wind up using more of their back muscles and potentially more of their glute muscles as well due to them being more bent forwards. Now, this is a complaint that I get a lot from taller people, but keep in mind that it's not something that is exclusive to tall people alone. Tall people can still have relatively shorter femurs, just like Sherelle is the same height as me and has relatively longer femurs. It's all about the relative length of your femur to your tibia and to your torso. And of course, we also have to look to the overall mobility that you have through your joints, particularly the ankle joint, which we'll come back to. Now, if we added in a heel lift, what this does is it winds up increasing the relative length of the lower leg from the knee down, or the tibia. Now, if all else is equal with the same torso length, same femur length, but a slightly longer tibia, now, what does this mean? It means that, technically speaking, the femur is now relatively shorter from a mechanic standpoint. And this is why it becomes easier for people to squat deeper and it takes pressure off their lower back and helps them maintain a more upright torso with a heel elevation. It also allows you to push your knees further forwards over your toes and it helps you distributing your weight a little bit more through the front of the foot and the ball of the foot. 
This is something that often gets overlooked a lot. If you look at how most people are cueing in squats, it's to put pressure through not just the ball of the foot, but more so the heels. There's also a lot of recommendations to be screwing your feet outwards into the floor and to be spreading everything apart, which tends to favor more of the weight being on the outside of the foot. Now, this isn't necessarily a wrong thing to do, but it tends to bias a certain motion at the ankle joint, which is the opposite of what needs to occur for your knee to be able to track comfortably over your toes. So when we're looking at increasing ankle mobility, or what's called in technical terms, dorsiflexion, we shouldn't just be looking at this one directional motion of the knees going forwards over the toes. There's a lot more going within the foot itself with the intrinsic muscles of the feet that feed up into the ankle and calf region. These muscles are extremely important for allowing more range of motion at the ankle joint, and they will be trained appropriately when we allow for a degree of what's called pronation of the ankle, or pressure being placed on the inside portion of the foot around the ball of the foot, along with the opposite action, which is supination, or rolling the foot outwards. Now, I'm not saying that we need to push excessively through the inside of the foot, as that is also problematic. But putting our body into positions where it will preferentially put more pressure through these regions will be an important part of improving range of motion. And the heel lift is a very simple way to automatically cue this without much coaching or thought required. So this is what we're left with. If you're finding it harder to stay more upright in the squat, or find your lower back gets beat up all the time when you're squatting, or you identify what you think are longer femurs and a shorter torso, adding a heel lift is a great tool that I recommend you always use. There's nothing wrong with it. Even the best lifters in the world who have what would be deemed as the ideal squat structure will use a heel elevation. It's not cheating, it's using biomechanics intelligently to get your body moving as efficiently as possible to move weight. It's important to keep in mind here, what's the reason why we're all doing squats in the first place? I'm guessing it's to train your leg muscles or to lift a weight effectively for a competitive sport like powerlifting, Olympic lifting, or CrossFit. If you use a heel elevation, you'll be able to focus more effectively on doing this. And this is why I incorporate heel elevated squats and split squats as a specific variation in a lot of my programs on Gambaru. It's simply a tool that allows you to get more out of your training. Also, if you haven't checked out my training and education platform Gambaru, you're seriously missing out. It gives you access to over a dozen entire programs and several hours of educational content covering a variety of topics. So if you like what I teach here, you'll love what's on there. Click the link in the description to get a free trial. Now, finally, if you do feel like or want to improve your ankle mobility further, the heel lift is still a good tool to help your body achieve this as it helps to cue more of your knees traveling forwards. You can also add in some more direct calf, tibialis, and pronation dominant work through exercises like split squats because that will help to further cue the knees coming forwards. But even if you didn't do any of that and just stuck with the heel lift, you'll start to see your ankle range improving over time. All right, that's it for today, guys. Hope you found this video helpful. As always, if you have any other questions or comments to add, drop them below, and I'll see you all next time.